Dr. Helen Elsie Austin, a Baha'i who devoted her life to justice and truth, was a woman of many firsts. She was one of the first African-American women lawyers in the United States, the first African-American woman to receive a law degree from the University of Cincinnati, and the first African-American woman to serve as an assistant to a state attorney general. Dr. Austin's devotion to standing up for justice and truth began as a child in Cincinnati, where her family moved after she was born in Alabama in 1908. One of just two African-American children in her classroom, she pointed out errors in a textbook that denigrated the roles of Africans in world history. When recalling that moment, she stated, Can you imagine two little black girls in a school full of white children and a classroom of white children? And with all the candor and cruelty of the young, the entire class looked at us, and there were, of course, a few snickers and grins. It was then that I remembered my grandmother. I felt as if the clan was standing there with the guns trained on me. With great resentment and resolve, I stood up and said, I was taught in a black school that Africans worked iron before Europeans knew anything about it. I was taught that they knew how to cast bronze and making statues, and that they worked in gold and ivory so beautifully that the European nations came to their shores to buy their carvings and statues. That is what I was taught in a black school. There was an electrical silence. But friends, can you imagine if there had been no protest? What ingrained prejudice and hostility would have been implanted in the minds of those children? And what humiliation and degradation would have been stamped upon us? In 1928, Dr. Austin and seven other African-American women were admitted to the University of Cincinnati. Historically, there was limited attendance of blacks at the university. The first known attendee was not even named in university records. Austin recalled she and the others were brought into an administrator's office and warned to not be conspicuous, mind being members of a subject race, and have low expectations. We were young, sensitive, full of hope and aspiration for university education. That speech traumatized us. We sat down and discussed the situation, and then all eight of us decided that we were going out for everything in the university. We almost took an oath in blood that we were all to finish the first year with honors in something. By the end of the year, each one of us did take an honor. At the beginning of the next year, that same official who had called us in and insulted us apologized for her remarks. Yet, Dr. Austin remained unquieted. I was young, angry, incensed, and hostile. I went to my father and told him I was going to become an agnostic or an atheist because I just don't believe anymore in these religions that are all separate, all fighting with each other, all enforcing prejudice against some group, and yet they say God is the father of all mankind. My father heard me out and then said, well, before you do it, why don't you go and talk to these Cincinnati people who are talking about the Baha'i faith? My father was not a Baha'i, but he said they have some interesting views. Dr. Austin became a Baha'i at the age of 26 and served on the National Spiritual Assembly from 1946 to 1954. She spent a decade in Africa as a Foreign Service Officer with the United States Information Agency. In addition to working on cultural and educational programs, she created the agency's first women's activities program in Africa and was ultimately named Knight of Baha'u'llah for Morocco in 1953. 
Dr. Helen Elsie Austin went to the Abha Kingdom on October 26, 2004 in San Antonio, Texas at the age of 96. Public memorial services were held at the Baha'i Houses of Worship in the United States and in Uganda. The Archive Room